The Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has announced three employment-linked incentive schemes for employees as well as employers based on the enrollment in the Employees Provident Fund organization, popularly known as the EPFO. As part of the government's efforts to boost hirings, this is being done. The three schemes are as follows. Number one, Scheme A, which uh, pertains to allocating one month's uh, wage for uh, freshers to as many as 210 lakh individuals. Scheme B, which grants uh, jobs created in manufacturing extended to 30 lakh youth individuals. And Scheme C, support to employers, which is expected to incentivize additional employment of 50 lakh people. Well, it's important for all youngsters in their 20s to understand that EPFO and its long-time benefits. For starters, the employees provide funds and is a retirement savings scheme which is available to all salaried employees in India. An individual can enroll for EPFO by submitting previous employment details via Form 11 and family particulars or nomination details via Form 2. An employee needs to have an earning of rupees 15,000 or above and compulsorily contribute 12% of their monthly salary to be eligible. The current interest rate for uh, PF stands at 8.15%. Now, enrolling for EPFO opens doors to uh, many more benefits. Well, for starters, it enables individuals to save money for the long term. It's doable because instead of large-scale one-time investments, deductions are made from an employee's monthly salary. Uh, it's like an SIP. This in time of uh, dire need can also be utilized as an employee's safety net. This money, once accumulated, ensures a life of comfort during post-retirement days. EPFO offers a plethora of uh, service, the most unique one being the universal account numbers, which is a 12-digit number assigned to an employee by EPFO. Not only that, it offers online EPF transfer, an easy, paper-free, hassle-free transfer available to transfer an employment account. Additionally, employees have an option to withdraw PF amounts if he or she is not employed for 60 days or more after tendering their resignation, hence making it a streamlined process. It's applicable to as many as nine national banks, including the SBI, Punjab National Bank, ICICI Bank, Axis, Kotak Mahindra, HDFC, amongst many others. One can only imagine the kind of impact these three government schemes are going to have on the youth of this country in terms of their growth, thereby India's growth as well. We'll talk about this with our guest, Mrs. Sandeep Chatra, still with us on the show. Mr. Chatra, if, uh, you know, if we look at unemployment uh, and job security as one of the key pillars when it comes to, uh, you know, having a Vixit Bharat by 2047, having a 5 trillion economy, say, by 2027, how crucial, fundamentally, instrumental are some of these minor tweaks when it comes to attracting the youth of this nation to invest, enroll and apply? I think, uh, uh, first of all, to say that those are welcome steps. And it's important that uh, it is a, also a message that we want to go the formal sector. And therefore, uh, the benefits of EPFO, which you were counting in great detail, uh, which are quite uh, quite huge, and I think it's, it's a great option, uh, should be available to them. But let's also remember, Vinici, that EPFO and all of those facilities that we've talked of today, the employee, you know, sort of employment incentive uh, kind of things that we're talking of, employment uh, linked incentives, and they're welcome steps uh, for a large, large chunk of our population, aspirational chunk of our population. But let's also remember there's a whole chunk of people who can never avail the, in the current context, until they're formalized, avail the services of such social security facilities. Let's take the case of gig workers. Can a gig worker, whose numbers are only growing, can a gig worker, a platform worker, an Amazon worker, actually get to EPFO? No. Can a construction worker, uh, eking out a solitary livelihood in the labor markets of the city, get to EPFO? Can an agricultural worker, uh, farming, uh, you know, working for some farmer, employing the, tilling the land without land, himself or herself, get to EPFO? So I think we must recognize there's a whole set of people who are outside of this formal pale. That's one big issue that I, 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 I want to sort of put it on the table here. The other big factor, if you look at industrialization itself, and if you look at trends within industry, if you note the last 20 years or so, there has been a trend towards contractualization of workforce. 
both in the private sector and the numbers are there. If you look at annual survey of industries, data from 2002, 3, 2 data in 2022, 21, 22, 22, 23, uh, you will find that the numbers of contractual workers are only growing, uh, which therefore means they stood at some 23% in 2002, 3 in the same survey. And in the last years, they've stood at around 40%. So there's a rapid expansion of contractualization and even outsourcing of work. Now, what is contractualization of work in private sector as well as in public sector? Railways, for instance, and many other public sectors, defense, for instance. So there it's sub-employment. So what you have for a formal worker is not what you have for a uh, what is called a contractualized worker. Security of job tenures, the social security benefits he or she gets, EPFO benefits that he or she gets. So you get into a sub-employment trajectory with reference to contractualized and outsourced workers. So this trend must be arrested because if you continue in this trend, irrespective of absorption in industry, you find that people will not be able to avail the kind of benefits and decent benefits that, that you have. My third point and the third challenge that we need to address is this whole question of wages. Uh, you, were, you were pointing to opposition raising this issue. It is a substantive issue. Uh, growth in wages has been low. The International Labour Organization says that the growth of wages, particularly for lower income groups and even for middle income groups, uh, for India. And especially when you take about uh, increasing the funding and investment opportunities and giving access to, you know, the capital, what the startups need, and uh, basically also reducing the financial risk for the startups. This is a very key and uh, pivotal aspect for any startup. And in a way, this also encourages a lot of uh, innovation through the uh, you know startup ecosystem of the country, especially the space startup ecosystem of the country. And uh, it also boosts the participation of uh, the private sector, uh, especially in terms of uh, job creation and uh, you know promoting the timelines of the startups in, the, in terms of their projects towards achieving their goals and uh, venturing into new diverse applications where uh, the world standards are currently at. So this in turn leads to the, the growth of the strategic sector, thereby going, growing in all other various aspects, uh, be it either the economic growth or also attracting the foreign investment. So these are some of the points which I think uh, are going to be uh, outcome of this budding step of the government towards uh, establishing establishing this uh, huge uh, uh, you know venture capital fund where uh, mm. they are they're trying to promote the space technology all right mr sunil garg tax expert also joins us on the show mr garg your observations on uh, you know the tweaks that have been made with the taxes in our country of course long term capital gains profits now exempt to uh, 1.25 lakh vis-a-vis -vis 1 lakh earlier long term capital gains is up by 12.5% short term capital gains is gone from 15 to 20% and that's why we saw that fluctuation that dip in the market today your overall overall impression sir of uh, the tweaks that uh, the government has made do you categorize this as a practical pragmatic budget uh, or do you think this is also very, uh, you know, finely tuned to be populist as well. No, okay, but uh, this budget has certain hits and certain misses. And uh, one of the misses, uh, of course, on the taxation and uh, tax relief to the middle class families and salaried employees, which they were expecting. Just some laws are tickered tic uh, with like uh, uh, increasing standard reduction to 50 to 75,000 and uh, tickering some slabs uh, minutely, having a tax effect of only 17,500 only. And that is not enough for the middle class families. It's like a lollipop to the uh, salad employees, every class. Secondly, regarding the capital gain, uh, a lot of demand were there to have the overhauling of this capital gain system. But uh, it's like that uh, you have reduced the rate of the long term capital gain to 12.5%. You have uh, abolish the 36 month criteria for being a uh, long term capital asset for for, for uh, other than these uh, equity shares and unlisted shares now every every asset more than 24 months will be long term capital gain but uh, see you have uh, now given the reduced rate of 12.5% but taken back uh, the long term indexation long term capital gain indexation indexation benefit you have 
and now withdrawn this withdrawn secondly regarding the uh, uh, short term capital assets short term capital gain this rate has been increased from 15 to 20% even on the unlisted, on the listed equity shares i do not know why uh, this rate has been increased uh, to 20% well 15% was enough and uh, so this is i think a miss on the part of the honorable finance minister on the taxing uh, taxation front matlab uh, and uh, regarding the litigation also now we are all, uh, again bringing a vivas se vishwas scheme that will be notified and uh, in a way uh, fmh uh, uh, accepted that there are a lot of litigation in the income tax act hmm. all right well mr chatra uh, it obviously you know takes a, a lot of effort uh, to please everyone but the fact of the matter is that uh, employment skilling uh, and the poor have has the government missed or has there been a hit in terms of the longevity of uh, you know the process that they have undertaken at this point in time i think the the vision is clearly set uh, i think the great transformation uh, towards viksit bharat and the nine steps outlined by the honorable finance minister today beginning with the agriculture beginning with rural focus and ending with uh, what's called the next generation reforms i think that gives a broad uh, visionary step i think it's a hit in terms of where it uh, focuses attention on the popular classes of india and that is the reason why uh, as deepak ji was speaking uh, uh, in another context the stock markets uh, temporarily fell i'm sure they'll rise again but i think there is a clear message uh, that the message I mean, of course there are lots of gaps there are de- debates that we are doing but the message is very clear that we care we care for rural india we care for working people we care for youth of india so i think in the headlines that's the messaging i see and that's the reason i welcome this uh, announcement in this budget uh, today uh, you can argue Uh, that this responds to a very closely fought election and the predominant social messaging in the election on employment on jobs on on rural development on farmers uh, so you can argue that you can argue that uh, and i think it's it's a good argument that some of the ideas that congress had had in its manifesto are taken up it's welcome it's taken up uh, and i th- i think the best ideas need to be taken up so one can argue that and i think i would like to respond to your earlier question in that spirit so i, I think overall uh, this this is a right direction uh, strong efforts are needed there's a focus for instance on the uh, still much more efforts are needed let me put it that way there's a focus for instance on the national research fund the innovation fund there's a focus for instance on climate adaptation and mitigation and green transitions the right words uh, the right messages and words are important messages of the direction of travel and i think the budget's done that the announcements have done that but it needs to be you know sort of backed up with numbers with with uh, allocations with strong allocations with methodologies to ensure those allocations are accountable and implemented on the ground and i think they are measurable and, and also measurable year on year because in the end uh, budgets uh, budgets are annual statements Uh, so in the end there there is an allocation and there is an uh, accountability towards that allocation and outcome for that allocation uh, right so sir. mere mere announcements are not just uh, you know uh, uh, is is what 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 can be only celebrated so one has to measure and mm. i think th- these are welcome steps in in that spirit viniji for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon